Me pregunta Gabriel. Hello, welcome to my bilingual interview. This is my lovely mom who's going to be doing the interview. She um, said I'll take one for the team and do the interview. All right, so mom, the first question is, what languages do you know? I speak Portuguese and a little bit of English. Yes. And when did you learn Portuguese? I learned Portuguese since when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And um, where did you learn? I learned in my country, Brazil. Brazil. And how did you learn? I learned it. My mom, my dad teach me when I was little and then I went to school. It was the language that you guys spoke in the home, yes, right? Yes. And that's how you learn. And how fluent would you say you are in Portuguese? Um, 100%. 100% fluent. You know how to write, read. Uh-huh. Okay. And English. English, maybe 50%. 50%. And what would you say you use your English to communicate? With who do you communicate in English? For my job, to go to a dentist, to go to hospitals, doctor's appointments, uh, go grocery to store. grocery store. You should communicate when I used to go to your, to your school, to meetings. For meetings, yeah, like yes. parent-teacher conferences. Yes. And then in Portuguese, it's more of something that we speak in the house and yes. where else? Yes. Church? Yeah, yeah at, at the church, uh, at, uh, the church I'm going is Portuguese. Yeah. And most of the, my friends is a Brazilian, then they're talking most in Portuguese all the time. Mm -hmm. All right, the next question is, what are the best benefits about being bilingual? The best benefit is when you, you can communicate with another people, you can have a reference for um, jobs because like your brother, mm -hmm. when he was a teenager, he worked at... Um, a car dealership, no, right? No, no car dealership. He worked, her first job was at um, Burger King. And then because he speaks Portuguese, English, and a little bit of Spanish, he, they put him in the drive thru to work mm -hmm. because a lot of people when come to ask him for lunch, they, they, the people who just would speak ask. English, they don't understand mm -hmm. if he was a Brazilian or a Spanish guy. And this was very nice for him because they pay for him one, one dollar more mm -hmm. than the other So there ones. are some advantages. Yes. And then what would you say are the worst disadvantages? So the things that aren't so great about being bilingual do you think there's anything that no, makes being bilingual so. hard i don't think so no i think it's so it's great all the time the more language you speak better for yourself for your future like your doctors mm -hmm. you know when it was a little the doctor you should go he speaks six language yeah he even wrote books in different languages yes. right uh -huh. and that helped him to be able to communicate with all his yes. patients and he grew kind of like a relationship with all of them because he wasn't having to use an interpreter to yes. talk to them he can talk he with could anybody. talk to them himself yes. yeah uh -huh. i agree and then question four, how do you see yourself as different from people who are monolingual? So monolingual means they only know one language. So what, what, why do you see yourself as different from them? Uh, I think because I can communicate with other people. Now, if I live here and I can communicate my little bit of English I know, or I can have a conversation with, with somebody else from the, com the community, it's great. Because I have a people who I work for, he always said to me, "Oh, I wish I I learned I did learn another language. I I did a big mistake about that." And then I think you have to, to um, like a motivator, you know, the young kids to learn another language like Spanish, like a Chinese. Do you think it helps them like see different perspectives, different cultures? Yes. Different ways of life. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question is, how do you see language related to culture? So we talked a little bit about that, about it being a way for other people to see different perspectives. But how does language and culture come together? Language and culture. I think you can talk about different kinds, the, the things you do in your country, like food, uh, lifestyle, um, 
and how and oh. like in my class we were talking a lot about like how culture shapes the way we talk like there's some cultures where it would be impolite to say something yeah so that culture yes, uh-huh. affects how yes. you speak to someone yeah sometimes uh, here I, sometimes i saw k- kind of things i do for america can be very embarrassing or embarrassing yes to, or some kind they of wouldn't attitudes do that. i have Maybe for the American guys can be a, a bad attitudes. In Brazil, uh, it's nice. Yeah, we you know? commonly joke a lot. We yes. make a lot of jokes yeah. that some people see as offensive, yes. right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, and the next question is, as a bilingual, what would you like to tell monolingual Americans? So you speaking, as you speaking two languages, what would you tell people that only speak one language, uh, specifically if, Americans? If they have a chance to learn it, another language going to be very nice for them because to, to communicate with uh, people in her own language is very important because as a, as a, as an immigrant no, yourself, as an immigrant from, myself, from a different country. I heard sometimes when I go to a supermarket or some places, People saying when the Brazilians or Spanish people are online waiting and talk with each other in Portuguese or in Spanish, I used to, to see a lot of people, heard this, a lot of people say, please speak English, you are in America, because mm-hmm. they don't understand. And I think, I, I think for, for Americans, it's, it's offensive for them. Because they think you inviting, you know, invading, invading their space. Their space. And no respect then when we speak in our language. Our own language. Yes. Our native language. Yes. And not adapting to their yeah. language in America. Uh, yeah, I think going to be the same if I go to live in Italy or if I go to live in China. China. <laughs> and then when I speak with somebody else close to China guy or Italy people, they maybe they they going to think I'm laughing about them or I'm talking about them. Then if you have a chance to, to learn a language for another country you're going to live, it's going to be so nice for you so, and for the people who so live So I there. guess you're encouraging people to accept other languages. Yes. And instead of judging or feeling like they're being judged by someone else who is speaking, to immerse themselves, to go into a language and maybe try to figure out what other yeah. people are saying and try to involve yeah. yourself in that language as yes. well. Uh-huh. Right? Okay, and then... The next question is, what is the most difficult thing about the English language? (laughs) You learning English, like, you can (laughs) test to that. What's, like, the hardest thing? What do you mean? Oh, pronunciating? Yes. The pronunciation of things you think is yes. not similar to no, Portuguese. No, because when... Yeah, no. I'm and you know about that because you have to do, like, conjugations, some, yeah, right? Yeah, no, sometimes when I say a word, for myself, I'm saying right. But mm-hmm. when they listen, they say, excuse me, because I don't have the same sound. Okay, you think they have an accent? Yes, the okay. accent is hard for people to understand that. Okay, so you uh, you would say the most difficult thing about the English language is actually pronouncing the words clearly. Yes. Even with your accent. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. What about like the English language itself, like the way we write it, the way like um, like we say like she went to the bathroom why is it difficult for you to understand that she comes before the bathroom or like like you know how in portuguese we say um instead of yellow boat we say barco amarelo so is that was that at least confusing about the english language the fact that some things come before oh when is the verb Mm-hmm. Uh, he, she, it, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. But when it's a uh, an adjective, or adjective mm-hmm. maybe makes a difference. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then question nine. Are there any concepts that you have a difficult time putting into words in the English language? Like, is there anything that you feel is hard to say in the English language? Like... Um. Mm, Are there any concepts that you have a difficult time putting into words in the English language? You know how, like, there's concepts like we have feelings, um, concept of doing something in the past, or the concept. No, 
things that you don't feel like there's anything hard in the English language for yes, you to say. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes, Sometimes the it, verbs, you know, mm -hmm. in the past to you, how to use uh, is hard. Okay. Do you have yeah, yes? No, in past, uh, I pass. Pass. Yes. <laughs> All right, 10. What advice would you give to an individual coming to the U.S. with little knowledge of the English language? What's Try to advice? learn more English. You know, instead go to work or do to do something else. Try to go to school and learn English first. Then think about work hard and make money. Because most of Brazilians, the time I came here, you just think about work and make money, buy this, buy that, and then times times time goes, goes by goes by, and a lot of us don't does have a chance to go to school. And now I think for myself, I feel sorry. I think the first thing people when come here is try to learn English the right way, you know, go to school and learn English. And like, I guess one of my questions is like, you coming into America, how did you navigate communication? Because you didn't know English right away and you're still in a way <laughs> learning. What did you do that helped most, you? Most of the time I try to guess, another time I try to gesticulate all the time, mm -hmm. use my hands, jump, do whatever. Do gestures, <laughs> yes. okay. Um, to, to, and to, to feel people can yeah, understand. Yeah, because what I notice now is that a lot of people have more support than they did yes, back then, yeah, right? Yeah. Back then, it's kind of like you're on your own. Now we have actual educators. We have actual people inside the banks that speak yeah, your the, language. The you have people at the, hospitals, yeah. grocery stores, all these different types of ways of tr of translators, right? Yes, yes. At my time, I don't have anybody. <laughs> you are your own translator, yes, right? Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to add? I think we answered all the questions, Mike. No, oh, I think it's okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Love you. There we go.